Shalom, 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 Royal House. Uh, it's another message of daily edification brought to you through the spare and power of the Father Yahweh, through his throne of his servant King David. All praises due. Um, I hope y'all are soaking in um, this uh, this lesson on uh, uh, the, the the prophet Nathan. Um, what I wanted to do right now. You know, just through the spirit, is um, go over a certain part because I don't know if y'all really got what he did, and it could have been very confusing about the 82 billion years and all of that, and why he had to do it. I want to be sure that y'all understand what he did and why he did it, so that we can move on. I will be picking up after that. Going to, uh, uh, we were in chapter 12, verse 27. So, um, when I get done explaining this, you know, um, then, uh, we'll go ahead and proceed. But you need to be abundantly clear on this. It's very important. Because there's a lot of things that, um, that goes along with this, all right? So, I'm going to take it back. Um, this is chapter 9, and I have it outlined right here. If you see it in yellow, see all of that? That's what I'm getting ready to read. So, um, I said that's chapter 9, and that's verse 11. All what you saw is verse 11. So, I'm going to begin reading in the middle of the, uh, this precept. Um, just bringing you up to speed, what happened was Solomon didn't pray the prayer that the Most High told him to pray, so Solomon was going to turn out wicked, and the Most High had to intervene to fix it, so I'm going to go through this, you know, uh, a, a little slower and read it so you can understand, and I give supporting scripture from, you know, the original 66 books, all right, so it says right here, the Father said, I must cause earth time to cease, and time shall enter into eternity and be at peaceful rest. And the whole universe, as you cons consciously know it, shall enter into a Salahic stage of stillness and movement. Now, the word Salahic, if you ever read, if you ever read the Bible, especially the Psalms, where it might say, you know, praise ye the Lord, Selah, that means a pause. That's what Salahic stage means. It's a pause. Selah means to pause. That's why when you read the Psalms, you know, you don't say Selah, you just do it. Okay? So a Salahic stage of stillness and movement. I do all of this so as not to slay another seed of, of David and Bathsheba as before, seeing that neither of them together could emotionally endure such another great loss and moreover i do this for your own sake nathan for you have not prayed for the things that be of the power but you have wrongfully prayed for the things that be of man now take heed nathan if i allow this boy to rule within the city of peace i must hold thee accountable now thing is by this time david had conquered all his enemies and everybody was having a good time. Everything was cool. So if, if he would have prayed for Solomon the right way, Solomon would have, would have been able to slide right on in and take over. Things would have been cool, right? But he didn't do that. He didn't pray the right prayer. So now that Solomon was going to come up wicked, and which is what I'm about to read, all of the good people, the ones that the Most High really loved, they were going to suffer under Solomon's reign. Check it out. He says, I must hold you accountable. And if and when the child grows up and leads multitudes of my children away from their first love. See, this group of people under David, this group of, 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 uh, of, of Judites under David, they loved the father, man. They loved everything about him. You know, that would be like y'all getting a, something happening to me and y'all get a wicked uh, 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 king over y'all that, 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 that took over. No, Mosiah not going to do that. 
he, he left David in place, and then this is what he did. He said, if they lead my children away from their first love, you, Nathan, will bear the, bear the guilt of all evil in the conscience, and you shall say it is my fault. Woe unto me. The whole world have been deceived, and I am at fault. The whole world meaning, all right, the royal house of Judah, okay? He, 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 he couldn't let Solomon take over with that spirit because he would have led the true uh, uh, believers in Yahweh uh, uh, astray. So he said, by means of my faulty prayer on the day of the conception of Solomon, but be of good cheer, Nathan, and take heart, for I shall prepare a way of escape. And when the time comes for, the, for, for earth time to resume rotation, neither David nor Solomon shall connect with one another on the plane of names. So when he said they're not going to connect with each other on the plane of names, all right, the Most High stopped everything. 82 billion years, right? Now, all that time, their spirits are being cleansed. And at the Most High's word, he's going to start the rotation again. All right? So, bear with me. He said, When the time comes for earth time to resume rotation, neither David or Solomon shall connect with one another on the plane of names, and David and Bathsheba both will call the boy Shobab. And this shall serve as a shadow of the Solomonic system of things to come. So, Solomon was supposed to be born, right? But because Nathan didn't pray right, Bathsheba was already pregnant. So the Most High did a switcheroo. He said, don't call him Nathan, when, I mean, don't call him Solomon when he's born. Call him Shobab. That way, Nathan didn't mess up because he prayed for Solomon. So that's why he said they're not going to connect on the plane of names. So when Nathan prayed for Solomon, all right, Shobab is going to be the name of the next boy. The Most High changed the name. That way, Nathan is not at fault. Neither is the Most High. All he did was tell him, because see, the Most High could do it however he want. He put Solomon farther down in the lineup. Gonna, I'm going to show you what I mean. All right. He said, Neither David nor Solomon shall connect with one another on the plane of names, and David and Bathsheba both will call the boy Shobab. Now, the word Shobab in Hebrew means rebellious. And this shall serve as a shadow of the Solomonic system of things to come, which my spirit of truth have taught you, and I am spirit. Hence, you know of me. And in this way, Nathan... When Solomon is finally born, and when he introduces apostasy unto the world, you shall be free from the responsibility of the iniquity of the insurmountable idolatry which proceeded out of the loins of Solomon. And now at my command, the world of time and ages and all its happenings shall cease. And when these things return again after many days, then I shall give thee great favor with David and Bathsheba, and the twain shall even respect you so much that they shall call you in to witness the birth of their children from that day forth. And you will watch them name their next son after you in honor of Nathan the prophet. They shall call him Nathan. But this child you shall not write about within the book of Nathan the prophet because it is expedient that you are able to maintain a pure heart. Even when Solomon is born and grows up and burns up the book of Nathan the prophet, you must not, you, thou must not have frustration and anger towards Solomon, but must even show him love as well as others. All right? So, what the Most High did was, Nathan didn't pray for Solomon. Now, Solomon was really coming because Bathsheba was pregnant. But the Most High said, all right, well, we ain't going to call him Solomon then. We're going to call him Shobab. That's how he saved Nathan from being responsible for what Solomon does. Right? So instead of Solomon being the next one to be born, he became the fourth. Let's go to uh, First 
First Chronicles 14 and 4. Matter of fact, let's start at verse 3. First Chronicles 14 and 3. And David took more wives at Jerusalem, and David begot more sons and daughters. Now these are the names of his children which he had in Jerusalem. Shemua and Shobab, Nathan, and Solomon. See, Solomon came last, but he was still the king. See there? So when that baby came out, it didn't have Solomon's name. So it didn't go off like Solomon, right? Then the next one was born. Then the next one. And then after that, here comes Solomon. But Nathan had prayed for the baby that was coming next up. But he wasn't named yet. So that's how the Most High got him out of it. Y'all get it? I hope you do. So with that 82 billion years passing, okay, with that 82 billion years passing, it cleansed Bathsheba and David's spirit to where it was only a split second to them. But with, 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 the, with the Most High, it was 82 billion years. It was an eternity. He stopped time and put it in eternity. And then in the fullness of time, he brought it back out. A split second to us, 82 billion years to the Father. Now that cleansed their spirits of all that they had went through and they had a real deep love for one another because the Most High cleansed them without them even knowing it, right? Yeah, that's something, ain't it? So, now they were able to have children. They had love. Everything about uh, uh, Nathan, you know, lusting over, but she all, all that was gone. 82 billion years had passed, all right? As they say, time help, time heals all wounds. Well, that's what ended up happening. And Shobab was the replacement in order that um, 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 that was able to get Nathan, you know, off the hook. Because he really didn't mean to do that. You know what I mean? Now, there's one more thing I want to point out to y'all. Um, this name right here. This is, uh, and it's only mentioned once in the Bible. If you go to 2 Samuel 12 and 25. I'll go 24. And David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her and lay with her. And she bare a son and called him Solomon. And, they, and the Lord loved him. And he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and he called his name Jedediah because of the Lord. Now, they also call uh, Solomon Jedediah, right? And what does Jedediah mean? It means beloved, right? Beloved of Yahweh. See it right here? Jedediah. So, why was he beloved? Because he was uh, uh, the son of the power in human flesh, but he was going to go off. You can read about that in, uh, what is that, Second Samuel chapter 7, when uh, father told uh, David that if his son go off, he was going to be chastised with the rod of men. Well, that's what happened. So now, looks like y'all are all caught up on that. Now we can go ahead on and move on to chapter 12, verse 27. All right. And it reads, Now let me bring you up to speed. The last verse we read here was uh, in verse 26. It says, Wherefore thou needest not thy words to be done even before they are spoken, to be pleasing in the king's sight, I say unto thee that all you truly need to please David is your king. You, David, your king is money. <laughs> all right, y'all back up now. All right, good. Verse twenty-seven. But I say unto unto thee, learn this, Nathan. Understanding cometh from the tree of life. It is the lowest fruit on the tree. Be careful not to pass over it without having a taste. And upon saying that, Abba, 
came in his proper name, which is Yahweh. Now, let me show y'all something. And this is how it's spelled. Y'all, this is why the, 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 the won't he do it, so never get this. Let me show y'all something. Look right here. See, see where it, see where it's right there. I, I highlighted it. It's J A H H E V A H E. Well, they pronounce it Yahweh, but we know it's pronounced Yahweh. Now look what he said. He said, "I became in his proper name, which is Yahweh." He said, "Let he who readeth take heed." To not use this genuine holy name of our power and creator, and even father, loosely. For it hath been determined and witnessed that the Lord will not hold one guiltless who taketh his own hallowed name in vain. So that's his name. And if you reckless with it, it'll cost you your life. Wherefore, even in this book of Nathan, the prophet, it is have been and shall be only recorded this one time. So what I just showed y'all, out of this whole book, the Most High only put his name in here one time. That is, with the correct spelling exact. The purpose in this is to keep the foolish and all of those who cannot tame their tongue from saying the all-powerful name of our power in vain and being held accountable, even in this life round. Wherefore, this sanctified name have been hidden, and other incorrect spellings have been rendered in its place to avoid sudden death and torments and outer darkness and punishment in this life and that which is surely to come. So, what is he saying? This is where the word Yahweh comes in. This is where the word Jesus comes in. This is where the word uh, 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 Yahushua uh, all of that. He said that was done on purpose. That's why Jesus is all through the Bible because that's not his name. God is all through the Bible because that's not his name. That's why we say power. All right. The, the most high, the father did that on purpose. He took the Bible. He took his name out and replaced it with false names so that you won't be held accountable. Because if he, can you imagine if he put Yahweh all through the Bible and these idiots out here? Taking that name in vain, it wouldn't be nobody left. Because he's not gonna hold you guiltless if you if you if you uh uh um put not put no respect on his name. Okay. So back to the reading. Now upon saying the words in which the Lord has said about tasting the tree of life, upright, power gave Nathan a taste. Of the understanding fruit of the tree of life and Nathan became understanding and Nathan the prophet understood the aspect of the father of all and he knew his calling knowing of the up and coming Solomonic system of saintism and spiritual wickedness from the highest places and powers down unto the lowest depths of darkness in this world which is called the earth life. And the father then opened up the way of the tree of life unto Nathan the prophet and the father of the all of and the father of the all gave a taste of the fruit of the tree of life unto Nathan. And the Lord power said, Nathan, take heed, I expect you to keep up with what is going on. Now, therefore, you desire to know of a surety that you can approach thine king with power, authority, and confidence and courage. But I ask you, Nathan, why must you know of a surety of anything? And power gave unto him another taste of the fruit of the tree of life. And Nathan could see things to come as if he was there in the time of the Nathanic prophet in the last day. And Nathan knew now that he truly had no need to know anything of a surety for one day within the journey of life should never be the same as the next and nathan saw that solomon would construct and contaminate the whole world with an evil order of things 
and he knew that the sequence of these events had already began with another taste of the fruit of the tree of life. So, Solomon, uh, the Most High allowed Nathan to eat of the tree of knowledge. When he ate of the tree of knowledge, Solomon was basically teleported in the future to see how bad that Solomon was going to be fucking up. And let me read it again. That's what he said. And Nathan saw that Solomon would construct and contaminate the whole world with an evil order of things. And he knew that the sequence of these events had already began. And with an annual, listen to this, y'all, an annual income of 600, three score, and six talents of gold every year. And Nathan was given spirit revelations of prophecy with each taste of fruit that he had eaten. Now, did y'all catch that? I'm going to read it again. Nathan beheld Solomon established, okay, an annual income of 600, three score, and six talents of gold every year. Now, let me show y'all something. Y'all know that's the mark of the beast, right? If we go to All right. This is Revelations 13 and 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and the number is 603 score and 6. Right here. Right? Revelations 13 and 18. Now, that's important. I'm going to show y'all what it means by the beast, okay? I'm going to give y'all this for free. Look what it says. And Nathan beheld Solomon establish an annual income of 600, three score, and six talents of gold every year. And Nathan was given spirit revelations of prophecy with each taste of fruit that he had eaten. And when he witnessed Solomon constructing structured settings and salaries for showing man the elusive strength of material gain, and the seeming substance of steady earnings of silver, Solomon would soon have man who was the image and likeness of the power and was given dominion over the beasts of the earth to sell themselves short of their divine likeness of their father, power, and to begin working for man, men making themselves like unto the beasts of the earth. That's why 666 is the number of the beast. And that day would let other men have dominion over them in the name of silver security for the sake of steady earnings of silver when in truth power gave man dominion over the beast but power gave not man dominion over man for the scripture said power made the beast of the earth after his kind and power said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over all of the various beasts which creepeth upon the earth. But Solomon shall say within his heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Now, what does that mean? He purposely, Solomon purposely put in place the beast system. The 666 talents of gold and silver a year, that's what he was paying people to work. And they started getting to the point where they got greedy, just like now. Look look at P. Diddy. He's a beast, right? He'll do anything for money. All of these materialistic actors, rappers, sports figures, all of them, they're beasts because they'll do anything 
to keep that money coming in. And Solomon did that purposely to show man that he is a beast. Look at these women. Got to get the bag. Got to get the bag, right? What do they do? They're out here sucking dick, opening their ass cheeks, being hoes, all right? And, and all of that, going over to Dubai, getting shitted on. They let them shit all in their hair, all in their mouth because they're beasts. And Esau over there laughing his ass off, all right? We're getting down to the nitty-gritty, all right? This is what Solomon did. That's why I said he was wicked as fuck. He broke Israel down. He broke Judah down to a beastly standard. This is why the Pharisees were so wicked. Why? They did anything for money. Just like now. They doing it now. Look at Gorilla Hebrew. This motherfucker doing uh, marriage, marriage counseling. This nigga can't even keep his own house together. And y'all do know the Sakari broke up, right? I get to that at another time. But they're beasts. They're beasts. All right? And it was all for money. Now, the number of the beasts has been here. Nobody had it right, including me, until I read this. And the Most High gave me the understanding. The mark of the beast is already here. Now, the final uh, uh, phase of the mark is going to be the chip and all that. But that's not, that's, that's not the mark. The mark is the mental capacity that you'll do anything for money. This is why Yahweh Shai said what? He said, he that seeketh to save his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake, the same shall find it. So he's giving you a chance to get out of the system that he created as Solomon. And what do we do here at the royal house? Fuck that chip. Fuck that jab, right? We chose to rise up above that and be and, and have dominion, all right, over a system that once had dominion over us. This is why we're going to get the reward. But everybody that bitched up and punked out, oh, man, how am I supposed to feed my family? How am I supposed to feed my family, man? You know, I got to feed my family, man. Fuck it, man. Fuck it. You know, they got, they, they, they took the poke, right? Because you'll do anything for money. So you proved Solomon right. You fell under the, Sol the Solomonic system, the beast system. He proven that you a fucking beast. So all of you out there, that can't turn down a dollar. All of y'all out there, you fucking Pharisees. All right, all of y'all that 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 think you know what the fuck you talking about, you don't, man. So, just thought I'd put that in there. All right, a couple of minutes left, and I'm gonna finish this this paragraph. But Solomon shall say within his heart concerning the estate of the sons of men that they might see that they themselves are beasts. And Nathan understood that man was given dominion over the beast, but man should not have dominion over other men. And Nathan clearly perceived the up and coming Solomonic system of slavery that would soon surround the earth and coming uh, uh, earth globally that man would lose faith in in the ability or desire of the power who gave them life to provide these those few things which are needful for sustaining that same life that power gave and others would place value in material things suffering men to have dominion over their own souls in exchange for material wealth that's the mark of the beast all right like i said look at diddy you know what diddy said he said that's power when i could make another man suck my dick and guess what he had him do it he has some of these faggot ass artists on their knees in his office, topping them off, right? Because he's a beast. The Most High never had a uh, uh, design for man to be over man like that. No, no, no. So if you, a woman or a man, that to do anything for money, and before y'all ask, no, that don't mean a job. He said if a man doesn't work, then neither shall he eat. No, he talking about when you work, and you able to sustain the necessary things that you have in life, you got food, you got a uh, uh, shelter, you got all that, then you're good. So you're working for another man or whatever, that's fine. But that man does not have dominion over you. It's an exchange. You, you give him the services of work, and let's just say you, you clean houses. You clean the houses, and he pays you for cleaning that house. He don't have dominion over you. You're offering him a service, and he's paying you for that service. Now, when they do have dominion over you, is when you're doing extra shit for the money, all right? You in the back of the room, all right? You on a damn casting couch, all right? You, you on your damn knees, you're getting your cheeks blown out, 
You're doing all these satanic rituals and all that. See, this is why all these motherfuckers going to burn because they beasts and they deserve death. All right. So um, we're still in chapter 12. All right. But as y'all can see, I'm out of time. But we getting there, y'all. Right. So y'all go ahead and soak this in. Got another uh, 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 um, breakdown on the way. Um, what is this? Nathan number five. <laughs> I done lost count. Uh, it'll be posted, so don't worry about it. But uh, anyway, Royal House, we give all praises to the Father of Lights, all right, through the throne of King David. Stay tuned for the next video. KD out. Shalom.